such an exciting time in the world right now with live selling. You and I know each other from the home shopping world. I want to bring people back to maybe where you got your start as a live seller. Yeah, sure. I don't even know if you know the full story of this, um, but I am from Westchester, Pennsylvania, in the United States. And in Westchester, coincidentally, is QVC, which is just right down the road from where I went to college. I learned that my freshman year of college, uh, it was my mom and my grandma, my dad, they all came down for my birthday, my freshman year, the oldest of three. So it was the first time that like I was away, they had come down to visit. They kept hinting that they wanted to go to QVC to take a tour. And I was like, I don't want to go to that. I'm 19, I guess I was turning 19 years old. I was 18, turning 19. And like, I don't want to go to QVC for my birthday. Uh, But we did because they kept hinting at it. And I didn't realize that 10 minutes down the road from where I went to university was this huge uh, campus that sells products. And so that immediately in my head was like, oh, I need to look into that a little bit more. And throughout my time at college, I went to the live audience shows for anything and everything. If they were selling jeans, if they were selling food, if they were selling bracelets, I didn't care. I went to the live audience show and more or less studied how they did that and treated it almost like a class. And then my junior year of college, I decided to put an audition tape on YouTube. And that's where I was discovered. And I had somebody from QVC reach out. They brought me in for an audition. Um, They told me that out of 17,000 people that they looked at, I was in the top five. And then uh, I was their pick. So they brought me on board to work for them at QVC on the host team uh, as a full-time on-air guest. And I did that for three years until I left and, and started my own company doing this. And it's now, this will this January will mark 10 years that I've been uh, doing home shopping. So a lot of what my experience is, obviously, as a live seller is focusing on language and sensory selling and, you know, seeing the feel. What are some of the words of advice you might have to someone who's thinking like, okay, I want to maybe dive into selling electronics via technology, because you're doing technology via technology. Yeah. Yeah. So I think selling in what you're comfortable in, what you're passionate about. For me, if you talk to somebody that I went to middle school or high school with, the fact that I sell electronics on national television, they'd be like, yep, that's kind of what he was destined to do. Uh, Throughout, when I was young, throughout school, I was the go-to guy to hook up the VHS tape for the teacher when it wasn't, when they they were rolling it in. I was the person that, uh, when the DVD players got into my middle school, I was the guy that hooked them all up. Um, When they needed the audio equipment set up for for the auditorium, um, they called me out of class to go and do it. So electronics was something that my entire life I always loved and was passionate about. And when I auditioned, I auditioned with an Apple iPad, which is the first generation Apple iPad, which is crazy because now I'm the brand rep for Apple and present them. So it's really become full circle. But I went after what I was passionate about. People ask me all the time about the category that that they maybe they should go into or, um, or, or what their focus should be, or they may get worried that they're branding themselves as one area, but they're really passionate about the other. And I think that when you're passionate about something, that translates really well on camera. And in turn, you sell better. Um, some people can do a really good job of reading the tech specs of a product. But if you can't paint a that picture of where someone could could put that into their life and how they could use it and educate and teach them because it's not what you're passionate about, then I don't think that the sell is as natural. And I think it comes off a little bit robotic. So I think going after what your passion is, is kind of cliche advice, but one that really is worth its weight in gold because that's what you, you've you got to go on camera and be be passionate or be able to get up in front of a crowd and be passionate about what you're you're pushing. Yeah, and it also makes the research and all the show prep and what it takes oh, yeah. to be a live selling host a lot easier when you're actually interested in the subject. You For brought sure. up Apple. And so I'm, I think a lot of people out there are thinking, okay, they're going to practice. They're going to maybe do like the Amazon live or Facebook lives or Instagram lives to yeah. practice maybe their live selling skills. But for a lot of people, they're hoping for a great brand partnership. So did you, so it was Apple that pursued you to represent Apple on networks like TSC? 
Yeah, that's right. So a Apple, when they come into networks like that, they come in through a distributor. Um, and so it's not Apple directly, but it's a distribution company that that is the one that's hiring people like myself to go on air. So that distribution company is the one that pursued me in order to do that. I don't really attach my name to it unless I'm really passionate about it. There's times that you have to go on air with things that maybe you don't use every day, but part of my requirement, my contract is you've got to send me the product because I need to come up with those real life stories. And I've got to allow myself the time to be able to become passionate about a product. Sometimes it's instantaneous. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to be able to get there. Since you brought up contract, uh, what are the money-making opportunities? Because I want people to understand that they don't have to necessarily work for samples and promo codes. There, You bring a talent, you bring a skill, you bring yeah. a measurable return on investment, which is the brand paying you because you're going to sell for them. How have you structured your life in this way? So I have made a lot of mistakes. Um, I've accepted deals where first time I accepted a deal when someone told me they would give me a dollar for every unit I sold. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be rich. Like I can't wait. And I sold 55 or 54 units or something at a three o'clock. And I had to get up at three o'clock in the morning. For $54, I would have slept. Like I, I would not have done it. And I learned through that, okay, well, now you gotta have a minimum. So how about we'll do the dollar deal, but it's gonna be 250 bucks because it's gotta be worth me to be able to get up and get out of bed. And for $250 to go on air for eight minutes, yeah, I'll do it. That's fine. No, no big deal. Um, now that is a trade-off from from people who I know that go on air that make fifteen hundred dollars to go on air for that eight minutes. So, you know, that's I'm I'm speaking numbers from what is the QVC world, and it changes from guest to guest and it changes from category to category. It comes into the business end. What's the margin? And this is what I've really learned, and it took me 10 years to learn it. I'm I'm still learning, I'm still changing, I'm still adapting. Knowing your worth knowing that you are bringing something to the table is incredibly important. And I think for some people, it takes a long time to be able to get there. I think not getting greedy um, and looking for not just what is the short term. And I explain this to every single one of my, my brands that I represent. I'm not going to work with a brand that, or that they may go on air one time and that be it, but I'm not going to work with a brand with the idea from the beginning of, well, you're going to be a one and done. Every single brand that I work with is we're going to go on air for the next several years together. And I'm going to be your partner to build up your business. Because if I go on air with your product and it sells well, you're going to hire me to keep going back on air it's because I get paid every time that I'm on camera. So it's a little bit different. We call them hits where you get paid for every single time that you go in front of the camera. If you're on air for five times in a day, you get paid five times in that day. If you're on air once for that day, you get paid air uh, for that airing one time. And so I'm looking for that repetitiveness. I'm looking for a brand that has a lot of products to it that I get to, to represent where there's a lot of SKUs and we can in turn have a lot of success. I've learned to negotiate. I've learned to, to throw out the number that I think I'm worth. And when a brand comes back and says, well, we only have a budget for this, I've learned that that budget may not be worth my time. And there's other brands that that it is. And it's okay to say to somebody, no, you know what? I, I, I can't take that, that budget that you've approved to, and, and take that rate because the vendors that pay me more money would then, I would devalue myself. And so it takes years of learning and making adjustments. And the other thing is throwing things out there. I've also learned is I, I have made some of my biggest money throwing out a deal when I, I, kind of wrote off the coattails of knowing that of one brand in particular, which to be complete, I, without going to numbers, but to be honest, paid for the deposit I put down in my house, that in a day. And that was, that happened once in my career, by the way, in the last 10 years, but like literally my deposit in my house was because of them. Um, I threw something ridiculous out. I wasn't really that interested in the brand. They were a lot more interested in me. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna have to put a lot of work into this. So let me just throw something crazy, which I have never done before. And they said yes. And uh, you'd, I would have never thrown that number out there. And it was um, I, I, it was a, a one-time thing that I was very thankful for. They wouldn't have paid it if they didn't think that you were going to make them money. And that's what I yeah. want everyone watching right now to understand is, of course, I've done my share of working for free. Of course I have because sure. I was building up my expertise. But when you bring a skill that the other influencers don't have, and I'm talking about live selling, that's different than sales. So even if you're a salesperson, a brand rep, 
uh, live selling skills puts you in another tier. It puts Absolutely. you in the next level, which means you're offering something that the brand needs to connect with people in a new way to convert customers. And you are the person to do that. So for a little while, sure, work for promo codes and skincare if you want, but you are yeah. bringing something that the brand's will, especially as live selling and live stream shopping really hits its stride in the next year, year and a half, two years, you're on the front end of that. Now, yeah. Justin, I want to talk to you just a, briefly about the idea of being a guest expert, which you and yeah. I have done together, but you've also hosted complete shows on your own in the States. Yeah. Talk about what's different yeah. about that for you as live selling talent. 99% of what I've done in my career, maybe 98% is, is being a guest. There's a sliver where I've gone on to uh, our like second network on QVC and I'm the host for it. I, I realized in that time, the difference that a host brings to the table versus what a guest brings to the table. I'm the product expert. I need to know that inside and out. I need to know the brand. The advice I've given to people who have become guests is you will never hear me. And one of my biggest pet peeves um, is when somebody goes on air and they speak to the audience where they say, folks, when they say, um, you all, it should be targeted. You're talking to one person. You happen to be in front of maybe half a million, but you're talking to one person. And the same is on the reverse where when I'm on there, I'm part of the brand. So we at Apple, when we were engineering this at Apple, now I had nothing to do with the engineering, but I am the brand rep and I am the person who's representing that company. And so when I go on air, it is we, 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 when, as, a, as a guest. When I'm a program host, when I'm hosting from the side of I'm hosting the program, that we becomes we of the network that I am on. And I'm no longer representing that company necessarily, but more I'm representing the network that I'm on and that I'm hosting for. And that changes in a lot of different ways. You're, you're explaining some of the promo offers. You're, you're breaking down the cost more so where as a guest, my job is to break down the product and why you need it and break down the technical features of it. As a program host, my job is to break down and make it easy for you to be able to bring home and understand the shopping uh, value that's to this, the retail value, the shipping that may be reduced, that may be free, and how buying it now is the smart economical thing for you to do. Versus when I'm the guest, buy it anytime. You can buy it whenever you want. I'm not so concerned about you buying it right now in the moment, but I'm more concerned that you're going to understand the product, understand the brand, and then the host will, will get you to bring it in. When I go on QVC too, I have to actually combine those together. Um, and so it, it comes to almost to a dance where you talk to yourself, which, which is always a little weird when you're selling alone and there's not somebody there next to you. Um, but you end up, I practice in the shower. I practice driving in my car. You just start talking to yourself. You become very good at it. In the case of, of live stream shows for anyone out there watching, you can have another person with you. It could be a colleague. It could be the guest expert. It could be the inventor. It could be a makeup artist. You as the host can stick handle all the sort of the business of it, the calls to action, the hooks sure. and all of that. But when you are hosting alone, as Justin said, it's like, it feels a bit weird at first, but you have to practice. And it speaks to how important it is for you to know that product, that brand, that niche inside and out and upside totally. down. What you do in an on-air selling, you could take anywhere. You could take to any company, big or small as a salesperson um, and as a marketer as well. It's funny you say that because I am I am a firm believer that the skills that live selling talent will get, you know, I'm offering my course, of course, but maybe yep. someone out there has that natural ability. It, it spreads into all areas of your life. It's the art of persuasion. So communicating sure. with, with partners, with colleagues, with bosses. I mean, there are so many applications. Justin, thank you so much for your time. Reach out to me on my Instagram, my website, uh, justinsachoga.com is my website. Uh, you can head over to brightlightsmediallc.com as well if you want to check out any of the video work that's there. Um, send messages to anyway. Send a smoke signal. It doesn't matter. Get in touch. You can find me. I'm really easy to get in touch with. It's not that hard. And and tune into QVC and TSC because you might see the master at work right there. Find me there. Uh, Justin, I might reach out to you for another interview one of these days, but uh, thanks sure. so much for your time today. John, thank you so much.